What's going on there guys? Earthmaster here checking in on this Wednesday evening, February 10th, 2021. 8 p.m. is the date, pretty or uh, is the time. Taking a look at the USGS map here over the last 24 hours, all magnitudes for the US and Hawaii and the uh, Puerto Rico area, uh, 4.0 and above internationally. Check out all this movement down here. Oh my gosh, talk about a major amount of earthquakes following that 7.7 .7 that struck this morning. Uh, of course, aftershock activity is very common, right? Very common within the uh, large earthquake magnitude range. Prior to that 7.7, .7, we did see a couple uh, earthquake, kind of like four shocks, if you will. A uh, 6.1, 5.7, and a 6.0. Of course, reverse those in order, and uh, you know that, that was pretty much a sign that something big was coming. Uh, looks as though these were taking place within about an hour of each of each other and roughly within an hour of the main quake as well kind of a force you know kind of a something to look at you know when it comes to uh, possibly producing big earthquakes now it may it may have stopped at a six may have stopped at the 5.7 but there was just enough movement and motivation not motivation but a uh, um, pressure within this area to um, ultimately keep going uh, and check out this aftershock activity. There has been quite a few large quakes here following that 7.7 um, .7 this morning there. Near the Loyalty Islands or southeast of there. All within the region of Fiji, um, Port Vila area. We got Tonga over here to the upper right corner. South Fiji Basin. This took place here within this trench area, South New uh, Hebrides Trench. Where he, yeah, it looks like Hebrides. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, but yeah, 6.4 being the largest aftershock so far within this earthquake activity here. Um, over the last hour, I don't see any more. Well, let's see here. What do we got? 0224. Um, <clears throat> 0224. So yeah, we haven't had a whole lot of activity. Uh, kick up over the last hour, but you know the potential is there for more aftershock activity uh, Question I've seen floating around is well could this be leading to something bigger? I don't believe the dynamics of this specific region uh, Would would qualify for anything much bigger than the 7.7 .7. um, areas over here to the east over uh, in this area around the Fiji Islands area in this uh, Tonga Trench region definitely capable of producing 8.0 uh, potentially greater but as we look at the historic activity here, uh, just over the last, I don't know what I set this at, over the last 100 years or so, uh, that uh, earthquake activity in that region. You can see uh, the um, amount of quakes there. I mean, let me go back here to the uh, uh, newest. Okay, there's that 7.7 .7 right there that struck this morning. Or earlier today, I should say. 10 kilometers below surface. This is historic, right? Historic activity. If you take a look at the magnitudes of 8.0 and greater, they're all bo mostly over here to the east and to the south. There, major players when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to large earthquakes over there. A couple up here to the north too. Eight pointers. Tonga even seen some re, uh, eight pointers over there. This is this is just kind of a reference to see what exactly takes place around this region, around this specific area. Seven point nine uh, looks to be about the largest there in this area. Of course, historical activity is very high in this region, no doubt. Um, Seven point six, six point seven. 7.8 so yeah we're i believe we're on the upper edge of you know seeing that largest magnitude possible here within this trench area but that's not to say that some movement uh further up north uh could trigger you know the more pressure up there could trigger the uh a bigger one up here to the north towards solomon islands it's very possible especially considering the amount of earthquakes that we've seen just over the last 24 hours 46 earthquake well let's go ahead and get rid of the uh Actually, these are kind of included here too. These smaller earthquakes here, a 4.6 and a 4.8. South of Fiji, well to the east, 
of this cluster of large quakes here. Um, these happen pretty much right around the, uh, oh, let's see exactly when that those two struck there. I believe it was after, definitely after the, uh, uh, that after that 7.7 .7 area, there's a 4.8, 4.6 right there. So these are deep. These are some major deep movement, some major adjustment going on following uh, all this activity there in the uh, or uh, southeast of the Loyalty Islands region. So it's it's something to watch, folks, uh, as we continue throughout the night. But like I said, I think for this area we're uh, going to con continue to see potentially larger aftershocks so far, as I mentioned, 6.4 being the largest aftershock here in this sequence of quakes. Following that large 7.7 .7 this morning, we could see some more six pointers. I don't believe we're going to see uh, anything larger. Is it possible to see potentially a 7.0 or greater here? It always, always is. But of course, the percentage of seeing one, uh, seeing a larger earthquake of that magnitude, uh, following that 7.7 .7 is uh, diminishing as time goes by. But something to watch. Activity has quieted down pretty specifically uh, up here in the western part of, of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Things have definitely uh, calmed down pretty tremendously uh, in that region. Also over here towards the uh, east, towards South America, not a whole lot of movement. Just some uh, fives, fours throughout the uh, Chile region. And up into the uh, El Salvador region, some activity up there as well, five-pointer. But for the most part, here along the west coast, we have seen activity diminish. We did see that swarm last night kind of kick up, right? Remember the swarm, Salton Sea swarm? That has since died down dr dramatically um, following that uh, larger movement this morning. It's always, uh, it's always uh, a given here when we see further movement uh, over here to the west it re seems to reduce pressure over here along the eastern part um, up along the west coast here so it's uh, you know looking likely that uh, for now anyway pressure has uh, somewhat dwindled down along the west coast there was an earthquake there in Nevada a uh, 3.7 there kind of in an oddball area well away from the swarming down here near Mina that's the activity down here um, in that region. I do want to see if this has been reviewed. And it looks like it has. Review status has been uh, stated there. So that means a geologist has looked at it and declared it to be correct. A couple people reported filling it as well. Um, historical seismic activity out there. Kind of um, periodic, I guess. Not a whole lot in this area of Nevada. This thing did strike at about, uh, what do we got, eight kilometers below surface. So yeah, just kind of a kind of a eerie quake out there in the middle of the northern Nevada. Kind of a little on the strange side. We haven't seen too much uptick in activity in the Yellowstone region. Activity has died down there as well for the most part. Uh, and far as trimmer goes in the Cascadia subduction zone, this is uh, today's activity, 460 epicenters of trimmer. And it looks about the same as last night, maybe a m little bit more spread out here and uh, whatnot here in this area of the Cascadia. So we're seeing, uh, once again, a broad scale slippage along the entire area of the Cascadia subduction zone. But the numbers are going down, but uh, they're still getting. We're still getting uh, some slippage there along that area. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Um, not a whole lot in the solar weather department uh, to mention at all. As far as volcanic activity goes, Mount Hood. We'll check that out real quick. Don't believe there's uh, too much movement there. Of course, <clears throat> this thing's jacked up pretty good, so it's going to pick up the uh, activity there following that 7.7. .7. couple localized earthquakes right there in Mount Hood. That's going to be these uh, dark black line there, spiky, and a red spike there indicating 
very close earthquake activity to the uh, seismograph station. If you're wondering about these wavy lines, well, that's what a large earthquake will do to the Earth. Even though it's thousands of miles away, that 7.7 .7 showed up uh, pretty nicely on the Mount Hood station there as these wavy lines uh, make its way through the Earth, the vibrations. So definitely can't be filling it. I mean, no one's going to be filling that earthquake in Oregon, but the sensitive equipment that um, is designed to pick up earthquakes definitely picked it up. And it looks like it continued for a while. Uh, and no doubt the larger earthquakes, uh, larger aftershocks are continuing to add that wavy function there to a lot of seismographs um, around the globe, no doubt. So we'll see what happens uh, with the uh, <coughs> adjustment and whatnot uh, of this area. Hold on a second. Uh, see if I can get this picked up here. Kind of wanted to look here at this this specific map right here. This kind of shows you a uh, overall plate movement, plate adjustment, direction of the plates. If you uh, uh, if that kind of makes sense there. So we're looking at the area of movement down here. Let me see if this... Okay, hopefully you guys can see that as well. Yes. Look at the area of movement down here. Kind of in this region right here where we've seen that 7.7 .7 strike this morning. Got Fiji up here a little bit. But in that trench area right there, plate movement in general <clears throat> is kind of brushed up against here. Kind of moving to the north and northeast a little bit while... The Pacific Plate uh, moves off to the northwest very strongly. So, of course, this region right here, very capable of producing large earthquakes. But the general overrise pressure transfer, I believe, should continue uh, potentially up here to the north along this region up here. Um, ultimately, with adjustment, right, there comes uh, consequence and uh, further movement. So this area right here needs to pay attention. Actually, all up along this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire uh, needs to be on guard here, even though right now it's pretty quiet. And if you take a look over here to the west, when we get this major plate movement of the Pacific moving off and, and over towards the north and east, or north and west, I'm sorry. Hopefully I didn't say that earlier. Uh, this is all moving to the north uh, west, if you will. And that, I believe... Even though the North American plate is kind of going this way against the Pacific plate, I believe it still does relieve a little bit of pressure along the, along this region here. Um, so that's kind of why we've seen that swarming activity kick down and uh, dwindling activity along the West Coast. So uh, we'll see how long it stays that way. But, you know, movement uh, does create uh, other areas of pressure to watch. And I believe this area right here uh, is a strong point to watch pretty closely here's another uh, different uh, velocity field and whatnot kind of a little bit harder to read with a whole bunch of uh, ridiculous arrows right there ah here's a little bit here's a little closer one uh, this doesn't really show a whole bunch it kind of just shows you subduction areas or plates plates uh, really bumping up against each other Yeah, this kind of shows that subduction down there around New Zealand and this area of the uh, Loyalty Islands region as well. Either way, folks, um, just, you know, be on guard in a uh, couple buoy stone event mode. Earlier, this thing was kind of lit up due to that small tsunami that was generated. Not Nothing big from what I hear, just uh, definitely below one meter uh, in certain areas. So... What else we got to chat about? Hawaii, real quick. See what's going on there, right? Hawaii's out there in the middle of the Pacific Plate. Ultimately, this should adjust or should have some type of effect, right, on Hawaii. At the moment, not really. The um, eruption there still continues up here in the uh, Kilauea Volcano Air region. That's this area up here. Not a whole lot of uh, earthquakes to report. None up there, actually. But the eruption is still ongoing there with the uh, magma and whatnot, lava. 
Uh, for the most part, uh, activity is neutral, or at least uh, normal, I would say, in this region of Hawaii. No major uptick at all to report in that area. So be on guard, folks. It's mighty quiet up here to the north, Tokyo, up around this region here. Uh, Solomon Islands, like I said, this area right here is very capable of 8.0 or greater. Also over here, back over to the east as well. But I think we're done for the most part, at least historically, you know. Um, upper sevens, I believe, is potentially the uh, largest magnitude that we could see around this region. Just with the activity die dying down, the aftershock activity kind of dying down a little bit over the last hour, uh, that's a good sign. But uh, not out of the woods yet for further movement. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, earthquake 3d bell or earthquake 3d system here there's so many earthquakes out here uh in this 7.7 area that we've seen this morning that i'm having to readjust a little bit uh the number of earthquakes on the globe just because there's so many here so in order to get the last 24 hours of earthquake you may earthquakes you may periodically see me re-add quakes onto the map and the reason why i'm doing that is because there's just so much being sucked into this region uh, I'm not for sure why the program does that, uh, but it reduces uh, the amount of earthquakes around the globe for some, re some reason. Not for sure why. But um, so yeah, if you see that happens, if you see that happening, man, I think I can talk tonight. I hope I can. Um, then that's what's going on there. Just me making some adjustments, but uh, definitely still trying to keep it at the 24-hour threshold there of earthquakes, <coughs> or roughly within that region so all right guys i am out of here hope everyone has a great night tomorrow is what thursday thursday is anybody excited for thursday not really huh all right guys chat you a little bit later stay safe out there